All right, well, we have 6.06, so we'll uh, call the meeting to order. And first, just before the meeting kicked off, I, um, I just wanted to acknowledge, um, I think we all have heard um, by now that um, we had one town employee as well as one community member that you know, have dedicated a lot of time um, to the town of Bethel over the years that both unfortunately had passed away here in the last uh, week, week and a half. So I uh, just wanted to acknowledge uh, Tim Mills, it, you know, everybody knows Tim and Tim's been our utility director at the water sewer treatment plant for 33, 34 years, uh, Reese, right? Yes. So, um, and we know everything that he's done for us over the years, as well as kind of taking on the, the water uh, improvement project this past uh, year and a half. So, um, as well as Carol Ketchum um, had passed away as well. Um, and for everybody that knows Carol, you know, Carol's probably, I remember, you know, probably the most um, thing I remember about him was coming to town meeting day and seeing him as the town moderator. And, and he was the moderator for 25 years, as well as um, he had um, other various functions for committees and stuff that he participated on. So, so I uh, just wanted to acknowledge that and, and uh, anybody else has anything else that would like to add to that, feel free to do that now. I just wanted to say that I was happy that the select board had chosen to dedicate the town report to Carol. And uh, he actually wrote the, a nice note to the select board and it says, I was surprised to open the town report and see that the report was dedicated to me. <laughs> I had no idea. This was very thoughtful of you. Bethel is my town. I've lived here since 1968. I try to be helpful and a good citizen. Thank you for your confidence in me, Carol Ketchum. And I just thought it was the the, the nicest note and, yep. uh, and so uh, sweet of him. He was also our representative to Congress. Um, he was also our representative. Uh, I forget what years, but he was a representative to Congress too. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that's that's great. He was our representative. Mm. Yeah, but I don't remember which years. Yeah, so, so that's I mean, interesting. Yeah, and uh, that's great. Yes, and and Tim certainly, uh, you know, has a family and children and and grandchildren that he left behind, and uh, big certainly hole in the in the community and in the town, you know, office and, and just town life in general we're trying to figure it out slowly but surely and uh, have seen his family and uh they'll tim was also president of the vast for at least six years and uh, so there'll be a service um what i understand in the spring or, or spring or summer for tim so we'll certainly let people know uh when that happens and uh his full obituary will be in the paper and i think the family is going to want us to put on the website and um, which we've agreed to do so well, Tim was one of those guys that was, you know, hard to sometimes get along with, and but he was a good neighbor uh, to me, and we always got along real well. And I know his heart was always in the right place as far as the town, you know, the work with the town that he did, and uh, you know, father, grandfather, and whatnot. And uh, um, yeah, a, a bad loss for the town, Carol. Carol was a character, you know, he was a hot ticket. And, uh, you know, we recently, I saw him just a couple of weeks ago and we talked about trustee of public funds and whatnot um, and trying to get together. We never, unfortunately never did, but I guess Kelly said that he was in the town office last week uh, on Thursday, looking for a copy of the, one of the pictures that we had used in the, in the town report because he wanted to have it for his obituary. So no. she thought that was kind of unusual that he right. would request something like that. It's almost like he knew maybe. Yeah. Um, so they'll both be, I dealt with Carol years and years ago when we first came to town, we needed a little extra bump to get into our first house that we bought. And uh, he was on the committee for the town's uh, loan program. And he, uh, he was very helpful, treated us very well. That's good. Yeah, there'll be certainly um, the select board will have to make an appointment to the public trustees of public funds and we'll deal with that later in March. Um, revolving loan fund. Actually, um, I got a call from 
Bev Washburn and they already had and believe they actually have an application. She said, we're going to kick it directly to the select board. So I'll get it, go through the bylaws and we'll go there. So we reached out to someone today um, to see if they're interested in serving on the RLF committee. So hopefully, um, I hope it's not the same, same person I had in mind. Jane Strait. Yep. Kelly called her today to speak uh, to her about it. And, yeah. but there's plenty of space because we may have another person on the revolving loan fund committee um retiring so yep. yeah certainly let us know the names pauls we'd like to reach out to people because lord knows yep. we've got rooms on plenty of committees well it was jane that i was that i was yeah. thinking about yeah great minds think alike yeah well, i probably have got a story about carol that might be a little older than any of you <laughs> when i was uh 17 i wanted to borrow $1,500 to buy my first car. And I walked in and spoke to Carol and he says, well, why don't you get your father around and calm down on such and such a day and we'll talk about it. Well, you don't do that today you because we walked in and he asked me a bunch of questions uh, about what I was doing in school and what I was going to do and so on and so forth. And, he kept looking at my father and he said, would you be willing to co-sign for the, for your son? And he said, yes. And I walked out with a check. <laughs> That'll uh, never happen now. <laughs> 20, 20 minute visit. And I had a $1,500 check in my hand. Oh, it doesn't funny. happen that way anymore. Spoke at a recent historical society meeting also and told about his journey here in the bank and his journey through the bank and, community. It was, he is a gr was a great storyteller and great benefit to the, to the town. Yeah. I met Carol through the church. Uh, he was attending for a couple years uh, the Minnesota Conference meeting for the United Church of Christ, and that's related to the Bethel, the Brick Church. And uh, he, and so I, you know, came to appreciate his wisdom and his faith and his commitment through that. Uh, and yeah. Oh, and you mentioned Jane Strait. We were shocked uh, just a week or so ago to discover that my neighbor had passed away in December. We yeah. did not know that. Uh, and wow, what a, what a shock that was to us, but yes. yeah. Yep. No, thanks it is. to COVID and snow and winter and, you know, everybody holding up. Yep, exactly. No, it's true. It's true. Um, uh, uh, Carol Ketchum gave me my mortgage so I could buy this house and he told me to make sure that I um, did the neighborhood well by keeping it up and making my house look nice. And when I said he was my representative, it was a representative to the Montpelier legislature for this area. That's what I meant. Okay. Hi. <laughs> That's funny. I spoke with him about, most recently about um, the bank in its history. Have, has the bank ever ta taught in the middle school and junior and high school financing to the kids. And he said, no, we've tried, but it didn't fly. Yeah. And I think that would be such an important addition to the curriculum. I think, Chris, you have girls that are there. L knowing how to handle your funds is extremely important. And he knew it. Mm -hmm. Been trying to get that type of stuff in the curriculum for probably 30 years. For some reason, the administration doesn't, or whomever, doesn't feel that that's necessary. I, I don't get it. But I don't either. I just don't get it. Well, we Chris is running. The, Go ahead, Julie. We might not have all the tax sales that people okay. need, and when there are kids, how to finance their money, how to, okay. how to handle it. Well, Chris is running for school board tomorrow, so you can, he gets elected, you can all send all your wish lists to Chris, Chris Jarvis. 
There you go, Chris. Okay, Chris, what are you going to promise me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're in information now, aren't we? Uh. Yeah, so we'll, um, uh, unless anybody has anything further, um, let's just, uh, right now we just got to either um, approve the agenda or if there's any additions to the agenda, that would be the time to do it. Most of it is about the informational meeting. And then we have um, three items after, after which. Under other business, uh, Dave, do you think you could give us an update on the transfer station under other business? Uh, yeah, when we get to that point, I'm wondering if, if we want to have a uh, ex quick executive session on the transfer station now that we know who all the players are in the negotiating teams. Yeah. Or can we can wait another another meeting if you want. Yeah, I don't have any information to add, but um, yeah, we we know um that it will be David Barker, and um, I'm hoping that our building issue gets resolved <laughs> before too long. But um, why don't we just have you update and then, or what do you want to do, Chris? Do you guys want to add an executive session? I don't know. I mean, I think we could probably talk about you know the the non-formal pieces and open session and uh, and and i know therese and i were going to be getting together with their parties here shortly probably in another week or two yeah because you and i are going to meet next conversations because we're going to meet we, first. once we get going then we were going to report back to the board on kind of yeah. where we're in the negotiations yeah because we need to hear from dave eddie first to know what's what yeah. our options are, anything on the table there before we deal with, um, before, and then you and I need to sit down and go through some numbers, which we can do later this week or next week, whatever works mm -hmm. for you. Well, let's just, um, uh, you know, at the end there, okay. other business I wrote down there, we'll just talk about those two issues. The, um, the current, the current issue with dropping off, um, construction waste and others and, and then, you know, the negotiation piece. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the agenda is written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Ayes. All right. And now we're open it to- was amended, and you want to do it as written or amended? Uh, we're, we're not going to technically amend anything, Julie, because okay. we're going to talk about those pieces under any other business. Thank you. Um, and we have public comment. So if there's anything that's not currently on the agenda for this evening that you'd like to bring up, now's the time to do it. I see Ellie's hand waved. Um, yes, um, I didn't get my town report in time for the February 14th meeting. So is this a good time? I have a couple of questions to ask about the town report. May I ask it now, them now? The town report in general or any pieces that we may be going over with the articles? Um, I don't know if it, it's um, a couple of questions um, in the recreation part. The budget or the write-up? Um, not the budget of the recreation, but just some of the figures in the improvement fund and stuff. Is that is that um, a, an item? Would it go under one of the items on the agenda or? Yeah, if, it, if it's if it's dollar and cents type item, okay. yeah, let's talk about it under the article eight, which is the budget. Okay. And um, I just wrote your name down, so I'll uh, make okay. sure that before okay. we move on that we'll take your okay. question. Thank you very much. Anytime. Anything else, public comment? Well, we're getting off easy. Can't think of anything, Doug, nothing at all. <laughs> no, no, can't think of anything. <laughs> all right, well, other than that, we will move into the informational portion of the meeting in regards to the, the town warning and the budget. 
Um, let's see. So just like we had talked about on the um, the last meeting, which was on the 14th, um, you know, Article One is is um, to elect uh, town administrator, um, which, um, as Therese had stated before, then Mr. Benson is running for that again. Um, and then Article Two is is the town clerk, which Pam is running again. And Article Three, town treasurer, of which Pam is running. I don't, and I believe those are all unopposed. And then Article Four is to elect by ballot a select board member for the term of three years. So this is the current um, term held by Dave Eddy, who Dave is running unopposed. And then Article Five is to elect a select board member of the term of two years, which is currently Lindley's, um, of which um, she is currently running unopposed. And Article Six is to elect by a ballot uh, Lister, term of three years, to succeed uh, Mo Brigham. And I believe, unless I'm wrong, there, Therese, that Mo is is running for that position again, correct? Yes, yep. Okay. And Article 7 is to elect uh, trustee of public funds, um, term of three years to succeed Eric Benson. And I believe Eric Benson is running for that. Uh, yes. Thing, correct. Yep, if your name is on the ballot, then they had to fill out a consent of candidate form, so. So if anybody has any questions, I'm sorry, flew through those, but they, um, if anybody has any questions in regards to town moderator, town clerk, town treasurer, the two select board positions, town lister or trustee of public funds, we could just take all those questions at the same time. Right. So here and none. We should maybe now's a good Oops, time sorry. to remind people, or is it the same? I guess Lauren joined since, but just remind people they can vote tomorrow at the school from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, or and also, as um, Paul pointed out, that people can also register to vote tomorrow at the polls and then vote. So mm -hmm. we had some right. new join. Yeah. So thought maybe we just repeat ourselves. And I think if it's easier last time, wasn't it easiest for people to register right at the voting poll, so at the school? Because yep. people went to the town office last time, which right. then had to send them to the, well, it was a fire station that time. Yeah. But, okay. Right. And people just should bring their driver's license. They need to bring driver's license. I don't know if they need another form of ID, but they definitely need their driver's license. So to register to vote, so. Okay. Uh, one thing that I, um, didn't uh, give anybody the opportunity last time uh, when it comes to Dave or Lindley is um, any time to speak if you wanted to in regards to um, the select board position. I know it was unopposed, so it kind of slipped my mind that, you know, there was nobody uh, going up against anybody, but, um, you know, if either Lindley or Dave want, want a few minutes to talk about anything, you're more than welcome to. If not, we can move forward I'm sorry to put you on the spot because i didn't ask you at time but i was just thinking oh we never did that so no i i would just say for myself that uh i really enjoyed this opportunity to get to serve our community in this capacity and hopefully people vote for me tomorrow and i get to continue and if not i might still show up to meetings and harass you all <laughs> <laughs> yes i can say <clears throat> basically this, the same thing i'm uh Proud to uh, be able to serve the town as in this position. Um, I think I still have more to give, and I'm hoping that I can be elected to serve that that post. Yeah, I, I think I just want to add, you know, and I've been on the board. Well, this will be the seventh year, and um, you know, I, I've served with you know all types of different people on a political spectrum. Um, and I will say that, you know, one thing that's really nice with the group that we have is, you know, 
clearly we don't all match up on the political spectrum, uh, which is nice because we get a lot of different uh, perspectives from, you know, different realms of that. Um, but at the same time, we're able to come together, uh, do what's in the best interest of the, the town and the citizens and move forward with um, policies or procedures or um, any types of other things. And I, I really appreciate the board. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely pretty efficient. Um, I really like that. So um, when I first started on the board, there, there used to be like a, maybe Paul remembers, remember we had like a two page um, list of things that just were left to die that they never <laughs> moved forward. Um, to do a list. Yeah. <laughs> I have to occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like, let's, I mean, let's be prepared to make a decision and move forward and not keep putting us on this two page paper. So I really do appreciate it. Seems like everybody's always um, looking at their, their um, select board packets ahead of time. We're prepared for the conversations. And, and just like we've had a few there, uh, you know, um, most of the time we agree pretty well and other times we're able to come to um, some sort of mill room. So really do appreciate that with everybody that we have. It's amazing what a little civil discourse will do. <laughs> yeah. that's, the way, that's the way they all should work. Right. Gene. And, you know, absolutely. Be, we're all the same. Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. No. Oh, no, absolutely. In this world, not. though, it seems to become a, a problem, but it's nothing wrong with disagreeing, but coming to a median uh, point at some point in time. Uh, just a respectful discussion. And yeah. Yeah. sometimes you just agree to disagree, but that's okay. But at least you can bring up all the viewpoints to make an educated decision. That's what sure. it's about. I mean, it could be it could be like Burlington, where they don't seem to be able to agree on the time of day. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. It. I. I think things. I think we do uh, a really good job, and I think as well as Therese and her staff does a good job of preparing us for our meetings and making sure that, you know, we have the right topics, we got the right information out there. Very seldom are we missing anything. So appreciate all that. Well, just as somebody who lives here. I just want to say that um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, you. We're, gl we're glad you. you came tonight. That's nice. It's nice to see new faces at the, I guess we're going to go back to in-person maybe, but which will, was nice too, but it's nice when extra people join. So. Absolutely. So we, unless we have any other questions in regards to the article one through seven, which was basically, um, you know, like we said before, the town moderator, town clerk, town treasurer, two select board positions, lister and public trustee of funds. Um, we will move forward, which is kind of the meat and potatoes, which is the, the budget piece of it. Um, as of last time, I just kind of went over it quickly last time, as well as this time, you know, the breakdown of the revenue versus the cost. And then what that net um, change is and, and um, how that impacts, you know, us as citizens. So the local revenues, which is the money that is raised um, other than taxes, um, has changed by about $5,000 from last year. And as we were talking last time, um, a majority of these changes are at the um, tax collecting end of things. Um, years ago, we had uh, <clears throat> quite an issue at the town of Bethel with collecting taxes and water and sewer payments to the point, you know, quite a bit of people got behind, which resulted in now collecting back taxes, which had penalties and interest. And so in our revenue section, you can see that we actually budget for some penalties and interest um, a year. Um, and as we've talked about over the last couple of years is as Therese has done a good job of collecting those back payments, we're now going to start seeing less penalties and interest, which is good for everybody, but we have to start taking that revenue piece out of the budget. So we've 
we've been ratcheting that down a little bit here over the last couple of years. So that's pretty much the biggest swing when it comes to local revenues. Um, and then the cost piece of it, I will just give a, a general overview. Um, and then we can go into um, smaller areas like Ellie's got a question in regards to the recreational and we can answer any, ones that, any other ones at that point. So the cost uh, right now in our budget is about $37,000 higher than it was last year. Um, a, a majority of the increase comes with the increased retirement um, piece to Vermont, which is making up about 25,000 of that increase. So uh, we found out in July of this past year um, that there was a significant increase of retirement uh, coming. Um, so we had to deal with that with our current budget that we're working in, but also we have to work with that with our future budget, which is this one. So uh, a significant amount of that, that cost increase is, is due to retirement. Um, that's been a challenge at the state of Vermont, you know, for teachers, for town employees, um, for other state workers. Um, we also, because we, uh, we started about two years ago, we started a ditching program inside our public works department. Um, you know, we found over the years that we just weren't doing the type of maintenance on the road that we should to get water off the road so we can last longer when we do things like gravel it or pave it. So we started off with $20,000, I believe. And, uh, we've seen that this is a pretty good bang for our buck, um, that we've been bidding out. So we've increased that 20,000 up to 30,000 to increase the mileage for this coming year. Um, we had a discussion uh, October, November in regards to um, uh, speed and enforcement in around the community. Um, of course, at the same time, we're, we're struggling a little bit right now on, on uh, part-time constable. Um, a lot of the police departments right now are um, are short staffed and typically how we get our part-time constables is from other identities like, uh, you know, Oscar does South Royalton as well as some in Bethel and, and in our, our newest, um, Justin, um, he's with the Rutland County Sheriff. So he comes over usually on what he would call his overtime to do, um, in our communities. And what's happened is, um, Rutland County sheriffs are doing mandatory overtime right now. So he hasn't had much time to come over as well as Oscar has been very busy with, with, uh, Royalton. So, uh, we decided to put some speed signage, um, so that we could finish the last two legs of the village area so that all four legs of the village area will have, um, some speed acknowledgement signs for individuals. Um, so that is in the budget. Uh, we also have a part-time municipal office position, um, to help Therese and, and others in the office in regards to either grant writing or some other part-time, uh, pieces throughout the season. And then we have, um, some wall repair money in there for the town hall parking lot, um, to at least get that started. Don't know if it'll fix the whole thing, but at least we'll get started there somehow. And then uh, the 2019 uh, spring flood that we had um, that did over, I don't know, over a million dollars with the road damage and did another, I don't know, we'll estimate it at a million dollars with the bridge damage. And um, we have paid off, we've paid off all of our, uh, the road damage pieces of it. And there is to finish the, the last piece of it, which is um, a bridge replacement um, that we have. So we, instead of doing long-term borrowing, we've been paying off this, uh, what called ERAP, uh, which is our 12 and a half percent portion of the uh, money. So that's in the budget as well. So the net increase, um, the net increase to us is $42,000 over last year. Uh, which is 2.1 cents on the tax rate, uh, assuming that the um, uh, 
assuming that the, uh, the grand list stays the same. Now, last year we had a very similar approach at the board um, where our target was again, uh, two, two cent increase, uh, but we did have the grand list that increased last year. The increase of the grand list offset the two cent increase last year. So um, we did not have a, a change in tax rate with the town last year. Um, so if you take this year's budget and last year's budget, it's really an average of one cent each year. Uh, what I can do right now, that's just kind of the overview. Um, I can open it up. So if anybody does have any specific questions in regards to the budget, I definitely have Ellie written here as number one. So I'll let Ellie go first. Um, thank you very much for you guys' time. Um, um, on page 35, you've done a really good job of listing the grants. And I see that the, the Vermont Foundation $3,000 grant and the Tarrant Foundation $10,000 grant is listed there. And then my question comes from, if you turn to um, page 52 under the Recreation Facility Improvement Fund, you have the $3,000 grant listed under FY 2020-21, but there's, there doesn't seem to be the Durant 10,000 grant. And I'm wondering if, it, if that is in the um, 19,359 of donations. Is that where you put the Turan Foundation? Did it all, did we, it could be, I'm trying to remember now, because um, I don't have my computer in front of me. Did, um, did, uh, we, no, did we get the Tarrant, Tarrant money already, Ellie, or is it coming yeah, next year? Yeah, it, it came in June. And okay. So that's why you listed it on page 35. You listed okay. it. But I wasn't sure because some of them we had, you know, we're kind of listening where we had. So then, yeah, it must be in the 19359 because let me just make sure I balance out. Right. Hang on. I got to look at one more page just to make sure. I go well, just, things multiple I'm just times. Looking at it, I'm looking at it, Teresa. And we had budgeted $10,000 for the Recreation Facility Improvement Fund. Yeah. Where on that page it shows 20. So I wonder if the other grant is in that. Well, I'm just looking in the, um, I want to make sure that page 52 matches page uh, 55, because I do the capital reserve report, which I take right from the trial balance. And um, so I just want to make sure that when, because this is obviously the, the rec facility, it's a yeah, it says 72666. Okay, I just want to make sure they match and uh, that the ending number. So yes, Ellie, it must okay. be under donations and fundraising. Oh, okay. Not It should be, but you're right. I'll make a note to fix it so that it's under grants where it should be. Okay. So thank you Therese, for that. Oh, Therese, yeah. is it possible? Um, I think I heard Ellie correctly that the grant came in in July. Of no, June, June. Oh, June. Oh, okay. June. Just it thinking if it, if it ended up getting put into... No, this it, current fiscal year as opposed to the previous fiscal year. Yes, June 3rd, it came in. Okay, so yeah, so it must be just in the, just not, I just didn't count, okay. um, so, so label when, it correctly, sorry. Okay. Oh, that's all right, I just did it. And then under FY 20, 21, 22, what's the 15,000 for? I thought we had written something that we were waiting for, for some reason. Um, and I think, when, and I don't remember what it was. I feel like we had, so because we was Dietry, but I, I don't know. You guys are always writing. And again, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. just, which is great. And it's just a, and it's, it's just a capital plan, so it can change. But I guess okay. I must have assumed that you had something in the works. Yes, it's the land water for 25000 Okay. Well, there you go. So, okay. Okay. Well, but are you sure you're going to get that, or do you know yet? Um, we're, we've been allotted a that, and we're just um, fundraising to match it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I forgot about that one. I know because there's just, that's the thing. There's always so many, 
Oh right. yeah. So okay. I can make a note because um, you can make that twenty five and. Yeah, and that's just something we need to yeah. Yeah. We talk about it briefly, I think, at your, um, yeah, I just, at the meeting that I attended, just that, you know, it's kind of a, it's like the yeah. $100,000 for the pool, right? I mean, right. we don't right. really know, right. um, and we haven't, the other thing we haven't budgeted either is like expenses for, you know, the second phase either. So that's just something we can flush out in more detail, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I made a note. I corrected that to okay. 25 and then. Okay. And so under the donation Please. fundraiser, what's the 3,425? Um, what page are you on? The same one under the 15. Oh, then let me look at the other page. Let me yeah. see. Um, I don't, I don't know. I can't tell from here because okay. um, right. I, I obviously, I don't have my work. I'd have okay. to go That's through. You could look at it in the spreadsheet that I give you, um, okay. <laughs> but you can see the seventy-two six 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 yeah. matches. Yeah. It's probably the. Did That's you guys great. wrote those letters for skate park money? It could be some of your littler fundraisers and. It could be t-shirt sales. Oh, oh, oh! For this, what we did over the summer. It could, oh, well, yeah. it's it's through the end of June, so it would have been. Um, no, no, this is for 2021, 20, 22. That's what I'm saying is I don't have my spreadsheet okay. in front of me. So okay. I, I'd have to go sign okay. into the software and look it up. But okay. if you, since I send you that okay. separate yeah. spreadsheet, I'm, if you oh, add okay. those numbers up, you'd find okay. it. Okay. Very but if you can't just email me at work and I will go online and give you a better detail of it. I appreciate you going over the notes. And, and, oh, and sure. Stuff. No, no. Well, I, I appreciate the input. That's helpful yeah. to me. Yeah. So anyway, thank you very much for answering my questions. And I'll let you get on with your meeting. And I'll say good night because I know I, I know about all the other stuff. And I look forward to voting tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thanks. And thanks for all you guys do. Good night. Thank thanks, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah, and just a reminder that the, um, you know, the 21-22 budget is the one that we're currently in. So that, that's the one that goes through the end of June. And then, and then what we're proposing, so which is town meeting days, the 2022-23 the budget. So just yeah. so we don't get confused a little bit. It's always confusing because you're multiple yearing it and it is. And you're 18 months out when we're budgeting, we're budgeting 18 months out. So it's, yeah. you know, it's hard to, hard to know. And then this year, like you said, we're dealing with the unbudgeted jump from retirement from 13.84 to 19.5. So we're still trying to, you know, I think I've made that up in at least one department, but I've made it up in three water sewer and, um, highway i think but the others are i don't know i'm trying but we started the year thirty thousand in the hole so because of that unfunded retirement so right all right any other questions in regards to the budget itself i just, just want to state too one thing in the constable's budget besides the two flashing signs was the money for a portable sign that had been something that people had asked for especially like on church street um so it's a portable speed sign so we can you know hopefully do some targeted enforcement so i just wanted to remind people that 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 is also um in the constable budget but again all this happens after july 1st yes. of this coming year yes yeah and there's a little more detail in regards to the budget on page 41 and and the town report um and, uh, most of what i had talked about is in there but um there's a few other um smaller details in there if anybody has any questions in regards to that Unless we have any other questions, we will move on from the budget itself. Uh, the next piece of it, uh, Paul, did you want to go over the human services piece again? Yeah, just take a minute. Um, 
the Human Services Advisory Board meets, uh, we solicit um, information from the various nonprofits that apply for assistance or appropriations from the town. Um, we have a whole schedule of information that we request from them. And uh, that comes into the town office and we usually meet uh, the first week of December to go over those requests. Um, this year we had uh, the usual group, uh, uh, Sandy Farrell and Stan Capron and our, I always refer to him as our fearless leader, Carol Ketchum uh, and myself. Uh, and we also had a member of the public uh, come aboard um, this year, Scott Putney. Uh, he had an, um, a lot of information about some of these agencies from his dealings with the school and with his own uh, family uh, issues. So he was a valuable part. And I understand he, he wants to uh, permanently join the committee, which is a great, a great thing. So we get together and we look at the requests that are uh, sent to us. We look at the financials. Uh, we discuss each request uh, uh, in depth. And then we came up with uh, the appropriation list that then we then pass along to the select board for approval and then along to the taxpayers. The town of Bethel has always supported these nonprofits. It's always been a, a big part of the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you're hearing, <laughs> hearing the puppy in the background. But anyway, uh, we always supported these nonprofits and uh, help out because uh, we specifically ask how they impact the town of Bethel. And so we have good information about the number of clients, and how they uh, how they really interact with the townspeople of Bethel. So it's it's money well spent. We feel, and uh, if anybody has any questions, or if you know of a of a group that's interested in uh, getting uh, onto the list, uh, at the bottom of the town report, we eliminated the the picture, which was <laughs> terrible, uh, and we put in uh, some instruction. Uh, as to how you can sign on to the program and, and uh, get in touch with the town office and uh, we'll put you on the list and get you involved um, with um, some of these appropriations. So thank you. All right. The only other thing I would add is uh, you know, one of the downfalls of Australian ballot is people don't get to individually discuss uh, the various agencies that are being applied for appropriations. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get back to a in-person town meeting where if there are any questions or presentations from the, from the various groups that we always encourage them to come in and, and talk about this services, uh, we'll be able to go back to that at some point in time. And if you're looking in your town uh, report, uh, pages 70 through 75 has the human services pieces of it. So it'll, <clears throat> it'll talk about the total appropriations as well as it'll break down each appropriation um, to the identity and kind of a, a paragraph or two of what, what services they provide. Um, so those are all in the book as well. Anybody have any questions in regards to the human services piece of it? And, and we've always, um, like Paul was saying, we've always um, had it as its own article because, and I wouldn't say often, but there has been several times over the years where um, amendments have been done from the floor. Um, I remember one year that there was, um, I think there was a human service that didn't make the deadline maybe, um, that we added on the floor yep. um, one year. And there was another, I think maybe a mistake one year that got caught um, and then. Well, there, there was uh, the uh, old stagecoach when they were back when they were stagecoach days uh, came to the floor and asked for additional appropriations uh, that was approved by the town. And then a couple of years ago, I guess it was uh, one of the agencies missed the deadline uh, but then it was brought up at the town meeting. I think Carl Russell actually brought it up um, to uh, put through the appropriation that they had requested. So Great. the system works. Yep. So that's all, uh, 
all under Article 9 when you vote. Um, Article 10 is the White River Valley Ambulance. Um, you know, White, Bear, White River Valley Ambulance is provides our um, medical assistance to our community. Um, it's, to, you know, the budget is divided up amongst, uh, I'd have to go and look in there, but there's a half dozen communities, I believe, that they serve. Um, Bethel uh, is a larger chunk of those communities. Um, and, you know, usually the kind of the services change by, you know, kind of, you know, how inflation works um, with budgets. So I believe that one was up a couple of thousand dollars this year. Um, you know, we're talking about a $127,000 um, item for the year to service the town of Bethel. So yeah, Bethel and Randolph for the larger. It looks like there's Barnard, Bethel, Branchery, Brookfield, Granville, Hancock, Pittsfield, Randolph, Rochester, Stockbridge. So Randolph is the biggest chunk and then Bethel, then it looks like um, Branchery, then down to Barnard, et cetera. But that's the towns that look it up. They're on page uh, 69, 68 yep. and 69 of the town report. You can see how that, that gets broken out there. That's always been its own um, voted in article. Um, I was just kind of looking. I would, I would add a personal uh, thank you <laughs> for having the, the E-Squad available. Uh, we've had occasion to use them and they are nothing but professional and on the ball. It's great. It is nice. It's great to have that service here. Yeah, they, they used to give us some breakdowns of information per town. It doesn't look like they do the per town breakdown, but they just have a total breakdown. Does that look right, Therese? They do the per town breakdown on page 69 of the, yeah. um, of the cost, page 69. And then 68 is there just their letter in general. We all pay the same per capita. It just depends on, um, you know, obviously how many people in your town, but yeah, so they do a breakdown on page 69. Hmm. All right. And then the one that usually gets a uh, kind of a hot topic some years is Article 11, which is when we do pay our taxes. Um, it, it used to be a little bit more critical on the day. I mean, we used to kind of always use the 15th of the month as the tax day, which the 15th of the month could land on a Saturday or a Sunday or um, something like that or holiday or, uh, but we did uh, make some adjustments in our uh, payment of taxes. Uh, was that this year that we made that adjustment? That Last year, they voted at town meeting to give people that three-day grace period. It yeah, just kind of helps right. because people who, you know, um, it's always tough when you have a postmark that you may not get for three or four days, but somebody walking in the door to pay their taxes that day is late. But if I get their check a week later, it was postmarked. So it does help. So we've just stuck with the 15th dates this year because we do have the... Yeah, because you have to set a date so that you can count yeah. the days after. So, and they all fall on weekdays. So I nice. triple checked. Well, I remember one year, you know, we, we did actually change some of the dates. One was like a 16th and one yep. was 15th. Yep, to make sure they fell on a yeah. weekday. Yeah. So we should be covered there. So that is everything when it comes to the, the town warning. Does anybody have any last minute questions in regards to any of the budget pieces or anything that may be on the warning? Nothing on the warning, but um, certainly in the town, the last page of the town report is the um, survey. And we have been receiving results. So you can either mail it in hard copy, drop it off, or you can go online and there's a link to it. So, and we have been getting quite a few um, people filling the survey out. So we're going to leave it out until April 1st. And then it'll be good because then we'll be able to take some the data from it and help us figure out, you know, 
some of the goals for the select board and myself for the next year by based on some of the results of the survey. So encourage people to take it. How, how if at all, is the town um, putting this survey out digitally? It's on our website. We released the link on Facebook. It's in you know every town report that we issued. Um, and it was on Facebook and Front Porch Forum. Facebook front porch form and the website. Sorry, I had to think about it. It go went out on all of our social media platforms. Um, Owen was kind enough to share it um, on a list that he has, and I'm not sure where else you know. But that's it. For, those are our options. That's what we did with it. Plus, obviously, we printed several hundred copies <laughs> that got mailed to people's homes. So, yep. I'm wondering if it's worth asking um, a few key community groups like I know there's the Bethel community forum on Facebook that could maybe also share it and then just sort of like the steering committee for the Bethel for all you know just kind of see if we can get a broader audience by additional direct asks to yeah share I'm sure Rebecca work. must have the link because she helped me focus one of the questions if you want to share the link with somebody absolutely feel free and um but yeah I think that she because Rebecca helped me craft one of the questions. So I can, um, uh, so I'm not sure if it's, I think I thought it was on their website, but I'll have to go look it's on the Better Connections website. I'll have to look because I don't know. Okay. Yeah, just thinking if there's ways to help, help the town push it out a little bit further or hit those people who maybe don't follow the town on Facebook, but follow some of the community forums. Yeah, and people are usually pretty good about liking it too. So once, you know, Kelly gets it out there so but certainly yeah if you can think of any organization please please feel free to share Great. Um, but i will double check that because i don't know what was the other one bethel what community There's the forum? bethel community forum is a facebook group um, okay i'll have I, I think rebecca's maybe one of the administrators on that as well so she oh, okay would, Perfect. If, she, if it's on a radar she'd be doing that um all right excellent i'll send her an email tomorrow and I saw on, I'm on Owen's listserv from my personal email and I saw Owen sent it out for us to, um, through equity inclusion, which was great, so. All right. Will the surveys be available at the polls themselves, the uh, paper copy or anything like that, or? She's got a box full of town reports. So um, I don't know. I could ask Kelly to run some over in the morning um, yeah, I was just thinking if you just print off maybe like, I don't know. Yeah, 50, uh, 100. Or 30 yeah. or 40 of them and just have them there in case someone wants to fill them out. Sure, yeah, I can do that. We can run them in the morning, <laughs> no big deal, and have Kelly run them over. Sure. Yeah, because that way you we don't have to rip her. up all your town reports. Yeah, well, we did ask her to bring town reports in case somebody came to vote that didn't get yeah. one despite our best efforts. So um, I'll make a note yeah. to have Kelly do that. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about it. Maybe Pam already did, and I just don't know. So... <laughs> I'll look. Survey copies to the polls. And again, the, the polls open at eight o'clock and they close at seven uh, tomorrow evening. And like we had talked about at the beginning of the meeting, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can, can be registered on the spot. So Make sure that you bring your driver's license um, with you to the school itself and see Pam um, so she can do on the spot registrations for voting. And as always, for us that count the votes, you know, it's always fun to uh, do a write in for Superman or Bugs Bunny or whoever else, but it. Every time that happens, that's something that we have to count. So it takes a lot, a lot longer to uh, count the votes when there's uh, write-ins uh, all over the place. So, all right. So please, no fictional characters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's always a bunch of them. Trust me. Yep. That Paulson is long gone. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. So unless we have any other questions in regards to the budget. Uh, we will, I'll just need a motion. We'll just adjourn the public hearing and we will just uh, rejoin the select board meeting. But I do want to state before we do that, we are not adjourning the entire select board meeting. We're only adjourning 
the portion reviewing the uh, town meeting. Yep, I just so a public moved. hearing. Yep. Just a public hearing. I so move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All righty. So now we are back into the regular scheduled select board meeting, which we had talked about. We have three items on there for this evening, as well as we'll have uh, another discussion under other business. Um, so we have the reappraisal agreement changes. Uh, yeah, we reappraisal last time. Well, you signed it and you made a motion to award it to Nemrick, which still stands. I just need you to re-sign the contract because we had to, they didn't like some of the changes that we put into it, which were fine. One of them, I referenced the RFP, which was more for the insurance, but it also brought up this whole three prong inspection thing. I'm not even gonna go into it with you. So anyways, basically they just want us to re-sign with a couple of changes. So I actually don't. Um, so no motion then? Well, I think that the motion is to sign the revised contract. Motion to not award, it should be the motion to sign the revised contract. What were the revisions, Therese? So one of them in the first sentence had said that we would, um, that I referenced the RFP. Like I said, you know, in the first, let me find it here now. It's right here. Um, bum, bum, bum. I think in the first, the contract I had said um, that basically the description of the work and as outlined in the RFP, well, there was some portions of the RFP that talk about two prong versus three prong. Um, it was inspections and, and they couldn't guarantee that and it ended up being fine with the listers. So that was one of them. The other one was on um, the payment schedule. The payment schedule, we had worded in there that we would start payment um, obviously when they started and that if there were, and that we wanted the payment schedule to be in conjunction with the work and the timeline. Well, we got some, um, we didn't want them to ever get ahead of us, frankly, was the concern. But we actually ended up getting some um, good, solid information. I had never dealt with Ed Claude Felter, that Lister who runs the portion for Nemeric, and he assured that that's not gonna happen, that they're gonna at a certain time, and you know, 40 years, he's always been, on time so that made sense and they weren't willing to take the contract unless did that he also made some good points but we kind of hammered out a couple of details the only other change i've made oh it still has it wrong is uh you have the mailing address wrong um for the town of bethel and that was it we just and he and i had gone back and forth about uh, lister assistance but that wasn't in the contract so it was the date but referencing the RFP and the payment. So it makes sense now that we actually got to deal with a guy who's gonna be doing the work, it worked out. So I just need you guys to re-sign it um, because I didn't wanna make changes obviously on the one you'd signed prior. So oh, it would just Therese. be a motion to sign the revised contract. So last time, just kind of looking through it. So last time we had 24 payments. So there were gonna be monthly payments over 24 months. So is that correct? Yeah. And then is it still the same going to be yep. 24 payments? Okay. Yep. Yep. The payment amount is still the same and the schedule is still the same. So okay. it, it's fine. All right. Now that we have some assurances from them, I think that the listers and I feel a little better. So we just need a motion to sign the revised contract to NEMREC for $121,080. So yes. moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So basically, Therese, that that payment will show up on our next budget discussion. It'll come out of it comes out of the reappraisal fund, so it'll come out of the capital fund that we have money set aside for. Right. So right. we won't have to budget for that monthly payment in our general fund budget. No, we'll just continue to budget for the reappraisal. And um, let me just see. I have a. I did a spreadsheet for that. We won't see it on the budget at all then. Like no. I understand it's coming out of the reappraisal fund, but will it be on there and then we're offsetting it from the reappraisal fund or will yeah. we just not see it? You just won't see it because it'll come, it'll be, you'll see it on like page 60 where I did the capital reappraisal fund, that projection. Now that we have an accurate number, we'll update it. So you'll see the expenses and, and the 
you know, coming out of that. That's on page 60. Yeah. But no, you won't see it. You'll approve it in your warrants. So you guys will see the um, invoices when you sign the warrants. But yeah, it's not coming out of the general fund. So no, you won't see it there. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <sighs> and we had a class two liquor license for Champlain Farms. So Trace, I had a couple of blank pages in my packet here. Is it just the two pages for the license? Oh, I don't know. I didn't scan it to you. Kelly did. Um, must okay. be, because uh, if you didn't get pages. it, yeah, maybe it was. Yeah, I had the same. I, I think those are just two pages. In. Yeah, just. They are. Up, yeah, up, yep. Up, I can show you. They just look. Yeah, it's, so one is the first page that talks about it, and then is a signature page that you guys oh, okay. have seen. So the other oh. ones are just. Oh, I'm sorry. Wardrobe. I don't know. I guess I'll have to remind her to double check the scan before she sends it out. Wardrobe malfunction or something. Must be. Well, I'll let her know. Maybe she had it in upside down. It just scanned the blank side. Um, or right. if she was scanning double sided things, it's a single sided. Yeah, maybe it just split. Up. All right, but that's what it is. It's something you sign every year. Um, I can answer any questions. Let's see. Um, let's put it back, you dummy. Um, so yeah, it's their second class liquor license, uh, obviously for Champlain Farms. It just, you know, it gives you the information list of director, stockholder. Um, so you know, really nothing more than you've seen every year. Yep. I know what Champlain thing. Farms is the gas station in town. Yes. Yep. Okay. Because I hadn't associated that name with that gas station. Okay. Oh yeah, Champlain Farms because they're they're. Um, let me see if it says. Yeah. You'll now notice the sign on the building. Oh, it's small, now I will. Now. Oh, it also <laughs> says. Ouch. <laughs> It says the applicant is Wesco, which is their incorporated name, and they DBA as Champlain Farms. So, got it. Hmm. Move to approve. Second. Shin, second by Jean. All in favor? Aye. And Therese, I don't know if you're allowed to do this or not, but I was at a select board meeting this year. I won't say where. And they were going through liquor licenses. Um, and one of them that they were going through owed money to the town. So they owed money for, I, I want to say it was water or sewer or something. And they actually, they actually um, didn't approve their liquor license because they owed money to the town. Is that something? Wow. No, no. Can you do that? I have never I'm heard. Curious, of like, like, oh, okay. Well, I guess it's you know, I, I, you know, but. that's interesting because when you look at liquor licenses, you should be wearing your hat as the local liquor control board. Things that we used to do in another town were they wanted. I used to call the local liquor inspector, and they wanted to know if people had been in violation. Had they been following the rules? What were they doing? So, mm. it's interesting because. For you to do that, you'd have to be wearing your sewer water commissioner hats. I don't know. I guess if we run into that, we could look it up one time. But luckily, all of our liquor license people are caught up on their bills. Yeah. But, um, well, I think all, maybe not all of them, but getting there. Um, I don't know. It seems like. I bit, thought it was interesting. It seems a bit unsavory because wouldn't yeah. you want them to, that would be their call to increase their business. But. Yeah. I guess I'd have to ask the liquor inspector before we do <laughs> that. But I did but, got thinking after the fact, I'm like, well, that, you know, if, it, if you're allowed to do that, it's not a bad idea. Like, you know, if they, yeah, I mean, you know what, I'll have to be square with the town, but um, I'll ask our local liquor inspector because I don't know. I'll ask him actually, I'll email the guy and find out. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting, but that is pretty hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, not that, not that I thought that um, we had anybody that was outstanding on that, but just if you're allowed to do it, it's probably a good opportunity to review. Yeah, 
I guess. Um, well, yeah, I'll ask him. I don't know. Patrick, I think, is his name. Or I maybe you have him. to have both your hats on that night and like <laughs> put I a pump on the water sewer board to talk about it, to move it back. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But uh, all right. you know, I was just curious. I meant to ask you at one point and I forgot. So seeing that had brought it up again. Uh, right. Uh, then we had the Vermont Municipal Bond Bank certificate for project completion for the water improvements. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think everybody knows we had the town torn up for two years, so <laughs> it's done. <laughs> so when you guys come in this week, um, I'll put stuff on the clipboard so that'll give you some stuff to sign, plus any, any payroll or payables that you didn't sign <clears throat> last week. So if people can swing by, we'll get that done. Do you have the, um, the revised um, total amount? Nope, because I'm still have my hand out. Okay. Still waiting for more money. And I uh, actually had a call from the bond bank today, uh, Ashley Lutz, and she actually was looking at our audit and she, I just scanned her everything and she's going to crunch the numbers on our, um, we have a, a bond from the town hall. A RISB, they call it. And right now I do these uh, 8038 CPs twice a year and, and the feds actually give us money back on our interest. But um, so she had seen that it was a variable rate and we were close to payoff, but she thought she said she before she knew that it was a RISB, she thought maybe she could save us some money um, on interest. So she's I scanned her all that stuff. So and she gotcha. asked me about the 2.8 million. I said, ah, I still got my hand out. I'm waiting so, for them to give us a more to buy it down. So the town hall, not to get off subject. So the town yeah. hall one is a variable interest. I, yeah, but and sometimes bonds are, you know, a lot of times bonds like that, that you do for that 30 year period can change, um, but it's almost paid off. So yeah. okay. she didn't realize that with that bond, um, build America bond, you mm -hmm. actually write two times a year to them and there's a calculation and they give us back a percentage of the interest that we pay. So yeah. I scanned it to her. So she's going to see if there's any savings there, but, um, but as far as the 2.8 million, no, I don't know the final number yet because I want more money. <laughs> so from the state, they hosed us, there's a bunch of COVID money, they should pay. And uh, so, so far we've had, we've eked out a little bit, but yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. Do, um, when you get a chance, Therese, can you just um, maybe let the board know if we have any other variable rates that are out there that may... Um, should be right here. You know, um, let's see. you know, the feds are supposed to do some rate hikes this year. And, yeah. you know, if there's any opportunities for us to pay off loans or move loans or... Yeah. You know. So we're on page 63. Um, I just don't know what... Yeah, page 60. So we have a bond that's coming, that's paying, paying off on 23. Um, I'll have to look at the water. I'm trying to see if it says, uh, so th these are all bond ones. The People's Bank, uh, I'll have to look at that one for water. Um, she was looking at the Town Hall Ag, municipal bond bank. So I'm not sure, I don't think so, but I'll double check um, because the USDA is, that's the one she's talking about. And then our others with the bond bank, we had one with Mascoma, um, which of course Mascoma was, but that was all your debt retirement and the bond bank won't touch that. So we actually um, need to look at the Mascoma one and see if they will, once we've made a couple of payments, if they'll let us freeze the rate, because I think it changes after a few years. But the other, the bond bank ones are set. Okay. So it just might be a good exercise to look through and see if there's any of that. Yeah. Let me look at the people's bank. We one. can protect ourselves before uh, any of these interest rates go up. Yeah. Any variable rates. Yeah. So we'll see what she comes up with. She's going to run our numbers through her calculator and some calculation program and see. Um, and we'll see what we can do. But I'll make a note. All righty. Uh, town manager's report. Is there anything left there, Therese? 
Do we have another one? I'm just making myself a note. Um, mm -hmm. Hang on. Let me just look at this real quick. Okay, tax sale. So we sold three out of the five properties. Um, the two of the the um, properties that didn't sell, unfortunately, are the same two that didn't sell in 2019. So we did hear from one of the owners that I hadn't heard from. So um, we'll see what we can't do with him. And there's now some COVID, extra COVID relief money. So I have a note on my desk and Dietrich and I have been talking about that, about reaching out to those two property owners to see if there's aid out there that they can apply for or we can help them apply for. Um, we've offered that before, but I guess I just need to be a little more insistent this time. Um, so I'm in the process of writing a structures grant uh, to replace that bridge on P Vine that's currently flooded uh, with a larger box culvert. And I'm gonna work on um, a paving grant for Christian Hill. I don't think we'll see the paving grant for Christian Hill this year. Usually you only get grants every two or three years, but because we're not sure of how the COVID money is gonna be funneled, um, <clears throat> My hope is they'll give away a little bit more. Um, I just put out the three-year bid for the cemetery. So Cecil and I looked that over. So that just went out. Um, so and then I have a bid to put out for Christian Hill for that work for another grant. Um, on the 24th, I attended a training with Two Rivers on the some of the rules about the American Rescue Plan money. Um, the town is looking at receiving 580, just over 583,000. I already have, you know, 116,000 penciled in for hopefully for sewer pumps, um, looking at another gener a generator for one that's um, on lower Christ on uh, lower Church Street, that's probably going to be about 30, uh, <clears throat> maybe a new roof for the sewer plant, there's plenty there to do. Um, so what they had suggested is that we don't spend any money prior to March 31st because of the reporting period um but they've also come out with a new process which the feds finally did because it took them you know they had several upgrades of the interim rule <clears throat> and they've come out with a final rule and it looks like what they're doing is pretty smart they're basically saying look if you're getting less than 10 million dollars they're going to give us the option to accept it all as um lost rev lost revenue and then we'll be able to spend it you know, within the parameters, like brought, you know, for water, sewer infrastructure and all the other things that they're saying. But the bonus of that is if we accept it, even though we're, it's not necessarily all lost revenue, but that's the, what the feds loophole is, except that is lost revenue. There's less reporting uh, because they don't want to get reports from every rinky dink town in the country that needs to do, go through some big reporting period. Um, so that's so but they'll have more information out now but the final rule and I just got an email today that they finally had another um, uh, pamphlet on how to I say pamphlet they're like 90 pages but how to get through the, the rest of it. Um, one of the good things is too is now that they finally changed some of the rules. And if we take it in as revenue replacement, we can interpret that pretty broadly to any service that can be provided by the government. So for us, we may be able to actually put some of that towards maybe even the town garage. So we know we have a list of water sewer stuff, especially sewer, of things that we need to do that are going to prevent us from raising sewer rates down the road. Also, infrastructure sewer water is helpful for the downtown and bringing businesses here. So, so that will end up there. But there may be uh, some of the money that we'll be able to use, you know, maybe for a town garage, but. We'll have a couple discussions, probably both meetings in March. We're going to put on there because you want to have you know some public input. Um, obviously, we have to be compliant with all the local laws and and all that sort of thing. Um, there's also one of the things that came out at that class is it looks like I don't talk about Kurt, but something called H518, another piece of legislation, where there may be money coming from the state for energy efficiencies of municipal buildings. Well, wouldn't that be lovely? Because you know I need to put a new roof on the town hall or town office and insulate and insulate like upstairs the attic and replace the roof. So, and with the town garage, that's part of what we need to do. So, um, you know, there may be money and hopefully we can leverage our ARPA money to 
you know, not every grant source is going to allow us to leverage with ARPA money, but some will. So um, they provided a list of other places we can look for money and, and things. So, which is good okay. news. So, um, so the, uh, the YouTube video of that seminar is also available. If anybody's interested in seeing it you can contact, you know, Therese or I have it too, we could uh, send it down to you. So you could, it's a very complicated process, uh, but, uh, but there is help. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It might be the freight train, but yeah, it's there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they know it's pretty, we'll see how the reporting is. I have to sign into the portal. I mean, we've done you know, everything we had to do, we've done, but our first reports due April 30th, but obviously we haven't spent anything and you're signed, but money still must be um, obligated by December 31st, 2024. So we don't, you know, we'll be making choices fairly quickly. Um, and then it has to be, um, expended by December 31st, 2026. But, you know, it was interesting. One of the conversations we had, it was uh, Bethel, Brookfield, right? you know, 583,000 is uh, a wonderful gift, but we all know, we know we need like a couple mil, right? You know, like to really get a handle on some stuff. We all can spend 583,000 pretty quickly, um, but it comes in two, two sections. We got the first half and we'll get the second, but... Will that, the dollar amount, will that um, make us have to do another audit or anything like that, Therese, or? It might, depending on what other funds we've expended in the year. You know, it's kind of stinks the timing because of Pinello Bridge. So it depends, although we may have we just kick out, we may end up having to kick Pinello out another year. But yes, if you hit over 725,000 um, in expenditures, then yeah. And I'm not sure if the ARPA money can be used for a single audit or not to ask. Because okay. obviously we're in the throes of doing a single audit right now. Right. Um, okay. Other thing is Alan Patton, I, you see in here, we have to get a transmission replaced for the John Deere, the backhoe. And they'd originally given us an estimate of $30,000 and we're like, no way. So we, um, Alan reached out to Nortrax, which was bought by, I think, United Ag and Turf, and got somebody on the phone there who called John Deere because our warranty had just expired. So they have, um, so everybody arguing, you know, on our behalf. So we actually got the amount cut from 30 to 14,000. So it's um, gonna have to come out of the capital equipment fund. I've talked to, the members of the capital equipment fund and um but it, it's insane we you know they don't know right now if it was um and they won't really know till they get the thing torn apart if it was a manufacturing defect or if it was what they one of the filters defected and it just kind of exploded so we don't know um exactly we won't know until you know the work is done but there was no way we were dumping 30,000 into that. Um, so luckily John Deere, you know, stepped up and, and, and has made a deal with us. So, but that can't money. Just, can't just blame it on Doug somehow. Well, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> thought if we could maybe ding his, you know, withdrawal, you know, a couple yeah. months of time from his retirement, but yeah. 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 So, I like to no. have some of it. <laughs> so no. Um anyways, so the other thing obviously um with Tim's passing, it um we're in a situation um with the water wastewater. Um Richard is fully certified to run our water system and he is currently wastewater one certified. He's reading and taking the classes to become wastewater two certified, which is what our plant, which is a man and a quarter plant requires. And Richard is reading and working with Wayne Bram to get his wastewater two um, certification so that he will remain operator. Currently we have Aaron Perez. Uh, thank you, huge thank you to Aaron Perez and Wayne Graham who have been tremendous tremendous in this situation. Um, I had got a name from Tim once. What do I call if something happens? Who do I call? Who do I call? And finally, he just said to me one day, call Aaron Perez. So much to my horror, uh, I actually had to call Aaron Perez and they have been wonderful. 
Um, so what we're kind of doing right now is looking for that quarter person. Um, we have our feelers out um, and but then now I have to regroup because obviously Richard is, um, was a position that uh, Greg Maggard created for Morgan Drury and mows in the summer, plows in the winter, it was wastewater. So I not sure, uh, you know, to me, I'm thinking that maybe we just need to bring in two seasonals and uh, bring somebody in uh, who's probably has to be 16 or 18. I got to read the child labor law. Who can run a lawnmower? And bring somebody in for the summer and have Richard chain them to do um, all the mowing. And they could come in and we could work that for the summer, do park maintenance and that probably three, four days a week. Um, and then maybe just and then bring on a seasonal, you know, in the winter. So it may behoove us to try that because obviously if we bring in the seasonal, it's no benefits, this sort of thing. But, um, you know, I need some more time to uh, okay. figure out the best position, you know, the best situation for us. Uh, Richard and I, I you know, are just kind of getting through what we're getting through right now. And God bless him. He's working a bunch of hours. Alan, we've talked to Alan about you know, uh, bringing in somebody, Dave Bergeron, maybe he did some time for us before, um, and, and helped us out recently. So hope maybe he'll can come back and do a little bit right now so that Richard, uh, gets a break. But, um, so we have our feelers out. So is Wayne, I've been in contact with the state. Um, they have been wonderful. And, uh, one of the things that the state said was we are very lucky that Tim ran our system. Obviously he won, he was a wastewater operator of the year. He was a water operator of the year. And she said, I would be really worried about your plant if it had been, if it was in another town. She's like, but we all know how Tim was and that your plant's in excellent shape. So we have six months to replace it, but it certainly won't take Richard that long to become a wastewater two operator. Um, but he's still going to need some support and training. So, um, you know, I'm just working out a plan. You think that, you know, you see this on the news, you think it's going to happen to other people. You don't ever think it's going to be actually anybody that you know. So um, we're getting through it slowly but surely. So as we sugar out a plan, I'll let you know. Right now I have ideas, <laughs> but no formal plans. That's all I got for the town manager's report, unless you guys have a question about something in particular. Okay, here are none. Um, select board meeting minutes from the 14th. Unless anybody has any amendments to it, I just need a motion to accept. I saw Dave's move, lips move. He said, so moved. <laughs> Move. I had dog problems here, so I shut my, my second. Okay, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. I see the hands. We're all set there. Other communications there were in the packet. It, I did see a bunch of um, DRB stuff, and some of it was from like October and December and so I don't know if, if they just accidentally get put in there or if we're behind I, some meeting I, I have a feeling that maybe they were behind. I'm not really oh, okay. sure. I saw them too and I got it. I don't know if if Rick yeah. had been typing them all up and just hadn't submitted them or what. I, I don't know where they came from. I saw them yeah. in my packet and just kind of laughed. But I, I didn't know if maybe they just accidentally got thrown in there or something. But <laughs> I, I saw them and I just assumed maybe somebody had a backlog that you hadn't seen. So Because I read the first... Yeah, because I read the first one, it was February 8th, and then I flipped the page to read the next one, it was like October or something. I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I just figure somebody got no. behind or something. Okay. All right. And any other business we were going to talk about? Um, the Art Bethel, um, Trans Bethel Royalton Transfer Station. So Dave was going to kind of bring us up to speed with the current situation there. And then after we were gonna kind of just talk about how we're gonna move forward with the um, uh, interlocal agreement piece. Okay, so we put out an RFP for an engineering firm of some sort to come take a look at our buildings and 
give us a report as to any deficiencies there were. Uh, we got one engineer to come and to the site visit and to actually talk with us at all. That was Carl Childs Engineering. Um, he looked at the recycling building and he said that it's pretty much it's good, good to go. We're not really concerned about anything there. Then he went up to the tipping floor, the actual transfer station, he came back and he says, holy crap, this building is, is not good. Uh, we got a report and uh, as soon as I read the report, I went to see Therese and we closed the place. Uh, he said that uh, high wind, heavy snow, and that building could collapse. So we're not going to take that chance. So it's gated off. We will only take in bagged trash, no construction or debris. Uh, I know that's a kind of a pain, but for the safety of our employees and our people in our uh, alliance, we've got to do it. Um, since then, we've had a, a look at it. Um, we've got right now there, well, as of yesterday, there was four options. Option one is to repair the damaged columns, which is actually the four big ones up on the main floor and two more down on the where the trailers come in. Um, we're looking at the rough, now these numbers I'm going to throw out are extremely rough off the cuff. We had Mark Green there Friday with Carl looking it over. And we're thinking there's about a hundred thousand dollars there to repair what what we got, keep what we got and repair it. We have to do some more work to protect the columns because apparently the uh, operators in the past have been extremely violent with those columns. So we're he's uh, proposing that we do something. We don't know whether we encase them in concrete, put up bollards, or whatever. Option hey, uh, Go ahead. What type of time frame would option one take? Option one would possibly, best guess, end of summer. Wow. And everybody's busy. And nobody's going to bid on it until the drawings are done. And Carl left on vacation, well, leaves on vacation tomorrow morning. So he's not going to have a drawing for them until mid to late March. And then we got to put it on an RFP to get bids done. Uh, and then everybody that does steal is crammed up, busy. And Mark said that he would fit us in the summer somehow. And if we go with uh, the town of Bethel's policies, we're able to single source anyway. So, I mean, I don't know if you ever met Mark, but he calls a spade a spade. And, and uh, he actually had some things to say about it, but he still needs to draw. Option two, tear the building down and put the new building. That option, uh, again, I have no idea about the timing because I haven't, I was, been busy. I haven't had time to try to contact building people, but uh, EF Wall was there a week and a half ago, and they wouldn't even touch the repair. And a new building, he said, is somewhere between 275 and 350. So that option, in my my opinion, is an option, but that's all it is. Option three. <laughs> Uh, Jen has done some talking with, I don't have the gentleman's name, but from the guy from Casella, they would come in and put up a new building, but we would have to sign a contract with them to, for them to haul our trash for 25 years. And, for, and there would be a fee with minimal uh, increases. No numbers were ever out there and I think Jen is still working on trying to get him some numbers so that we as a board can look at it. Boom. Option four, which 
as of today, went down the toilet. Because <laughs> we were hoping we could take the building down and do some wind mitigation and use it uncovered. And state statute says, no, you will have a roof. So that's where we are. Uh, Money-wise, we owe the engineer $1,800 as of now, the work he's done. Uh, we put a halt on doing any more until we get looking at these other options, because if we were going to put up a new building or do something with Casella, no sense of paying him 15000 to design and repair if we weren't going to do it. So when he gets back, well, I, I can't say because we're having a meeting tomorrow night. We'll have another meeting a week from, week from then, whatever. We've got two meetings <laughs> in the next two weeks anyway. We're going to talk about these options and see, as a board, where we want to go. Hey, I was kind of thinking outside the box. Is there, <clears throat> is there any possibility of switching so where the recycling currently is? And, well, let's say, let's say the the structure that's damaged, let's say we remove the roof, right? Make it structurally safe. Could you move the recycling up to the current um, dump area? And then could you move the construction waste piece to where the recycling currently is and do it that way? I, I think the modification that would be needed because you'd have to move personnel, you have to have a building so that you move personnel is that we need the Thai person to be there. You would have to, I don't know how you get people on and off the scale and be able to see what they're doing if you're got their personnel up on the hill. Uh, my first gut feeling without really digging deep is no. Hmm. Yeah, Jerry asked me, um, called me last week and asked me about you know cash flow and how much money they had and this and that and I said look I don't do cash flow projections for you guys I didn't do any work on your budget so I told him that what <clears throat> that, that Royalton has a line of credit of a hundred thousand dollars so he ought to think of that as his budget um, to get something done um, yeah I wasn't sure because I know we used to dump trash down below but it was really just bag trash I know Jen told me that when you were they're pushing it off out back and hauling it, that there's one of the containers that's really hard to lift. But I hadn't, she sent me the information from Casella, but I haven't had a chance to read it. And um, so I know that we've fielded phone calls already. People are upset about construction debris. Um, we did call East Montpelier and we had all their hours and put them out and the price is cheaper per ton, but of course people would need to budget you know, build their clients that they're going to East Montpelier instead of Bethel for C and D. Um, the other trash, because I had hoped we could just take, I had hoped we could just tear the building down and use the slab. But then Jen told me today that the two leach tanks are underneath that slab. And she said, you know, we already paid it, empty those and it's not cheap. So mm -hmm. without a roof and there's obviously water and stuff getting in the leach tanks would be even more money to fill them. But um I understood the point and she said it was in the material management plan, but I also wondered if because we were in a critical situation, if there was some sort of, you know, time waiver, or, mm. you know, that sort of thing. But I don't, I don't know. Not, not to say that we want to go that route, but you mentioned Dave, the option three was Casella coming in and resurrecting a new building or something. Did they say a time frame on, on that piece? Uh, that that has not we have no time frame or numbers on those on that and I think Kim the guy's got an odd name that it's Jim Tower yes him mm -hmm. he, he needs to uh, he and Jen are still talking about the fine points which I think I don't know if we'll talk about tomorrow night but definitely the week the next meeting we'll talk about those because we're not going to make this. We, we need to slow down. I, I was trying to get this rocking and rolling, but it's not going to happen. We're going to, there's just too much going on there. Uh, state regulations, working with Casella, uh, mm -hmm. serious, seriousness of the building. It's just, we need to just, we need to just calm down and slow down and look at this completely. 
And Jen is, Jen is only going to be here another week, or actually the end of this week. Hopefully, she's going to either get the info or pass it on to John or myself or Jerry so that we can keep talking with Casella. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's the only. It's either option one, we repair it, or option two, we have Casella deal, do the deal with Casella, in my opinion. Those are only two financially viable. I don't, we can't build, we can't put a new building up, I don't think. I don't think we can spend $275,000 and, and, no. We can do that. And you're, I think you're right, Dave. And if we're going to negotiate the, renegotiate the interlocal or whatever we're going to do at the end of June, um, you know, it's up to Royalton. If we get out of the trash business, then they're going to want to make their own capital plan and make their own decisions about that. So, um, I'm, I'm with you. If, if depending on the deal, I'm not sure they were never Royalton wasn't thrilled about making a deal with Casella before, but in the meantime, Casella's rerouting trucks. So we're losing money because we're not taking Casella's trash. We're not taking C and D and we're only taking bag trash. So I think you're right. I think the options are they make a deal with Casella or they spend a hundred thousand dollars and, um, and repair what they have, which buys them a little bit of time, but it, and it buys them time to do a capital plan. Um, so I, I think you're right um, about that. And yeah, and Jen, she's, and I'm not sure she, I don't think she'll be there all. She's going to work her 40 hours and be done. So she could be done by Thursday. Right. Well, but she, I did ask her to share the information. So I have it. So okay. Okay. The, the repair puts us back in operation this year, this summer. Uh, and Mark off the cuff was saying that he, he felt that his, he looked at it. He felt his repair was a 20 year repair. Nice. That's enough time to, okay, now let's put some money aside for a new building mm -hmm. or for whomever is going to have this <laughs> site. Um, it's, uh, it's difficult, a little difficult with, I'll say no more because we're in public session. Yeah. Well, I think that you liked Mark. Oh gosh, yes. Well, he was he's good. Yeah, definitely inspires confidence. I mean, local contractor. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with Mark on a couple of projects. He's uh, very good. He cut he cuts right to the chase, but he does excellent work. I've I've seen I've seen work out of that place at GW that just amazes me. Those guys know what the hell they're doing. Hmm. Well, hopefully you'll have some more information from your meeting tomorrow night and. Well, no, we won't have any tomorrow night. We just got to decide if we're going to pay Carl how much we want to pay Carl <laughs> because we, we we got. I need to get some more information for the next meeting. Before. Yeah, the building thing I think and the Casella thing are are mm -hmm. big. We've got to have those numbers before we can make any more decisions. Now, are they are they are they big to the point where this needs to go to the owners of the property and the Royalton and Bethel to discuss this, or is this small enough to stay at the local level? What are, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Dave or Linda? Are you saying is this up to the BRTS or is it up to the select board? Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't see any interlocal agreement that has a dollar amount attached. To that I thought the uh, BRTS was uh, running the show until there was a. Impasse, and then the select boards would uh, step in and uh, take care of it. I don't know unless somebody can tell me differently. Um, I think personally, if we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars or more, it would be wise to put to present to the select boards those options. And with a proposal that this is what we think we should do and why. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we would both boards would jump on board because, well, they would not have been involved with all of the legwork and whys and wherefores. Yeah, because I know, I know that was a question that we had when we were looking at some amendments to the um, interlocal agreement, and I know we never ended up. Um, we talked about it quite a bit in regards to, you know, at, at what point does it become the select boards matter rather than the local board? 
Um, and we never associated a dollar figure, but I think the joke was at that time, like if we were going to do something big, right. Um, facility, you know, something large at the facility, then it would go back to the board. So I guess that's just kind of what I was. Yeah. Cause you're right. That, long, that, that amount in the interlocal agreement was blank and both oh, boards, yeah. both the town of Royalton and the town of select board, mm. about the one they met talked about that. I think, um, that if they were going to, if the BRTS board wanted to make a deal with Casella, then that would probably require going to the select boards because it's the property owners and they'd be making a contract deal for a building. So that may end up kicking to both boards. You think, Dave, if you were entering into a contract with Casella? I, well, I, I think so. I uh, Probably yeah. more so than the repair, but I, I think yeah. even the repair, it should be floated by the boards and, uh, and so they could at least hear what's going on, have input, and so that if they get tagged is like what the hell's going on they would have some information i think the hard part is uh the select board you know the majority or the all of the brts board members in royalton are select board members so they already have a majority of select board members on the brts board so they're in the loop whereas obviously we have you and lindley um and then penny but yeah so i don't know i guess we'll figure out as it shakes out in the meantime i know we have a lot of itchy contractors who are wanting to hurry up hurry up and take c and d for roofing but it's you know it is what it is right now i mean i and i think i'm being very uh conservative when i say end of the summer i mean it, it's just talking looking pointing i mean it's going to take a while again it's going to be mid to end of march before we have a document and then uh, even if we went straight through the DMS, they are straight out. He said that he would find a way to get down for it. Take him about a month of work there at the building um, and probably another month of uh, building the pieces in his shop. So there's a good look at two months of work, you know, and then he's busy. So he's got to yeah. make room and I is it hard to find steel? And is it, the steel didn't seem to bother. Him. Oh, good. <laughs> Maybe he has a stockpile. Well, just, you know, depending on what comes out of your meeting, Dave and Lindley, just, you know, let them know if we need to, you know, I don't want to slow the process down if there is a viable option to move forward quickly, but um, just make sure that, you know, that they were more than willing to meet whenever as a joint board if we need to to push this thing along if if you do come together on a solution um for it so well i, I probably i mean I don't, know, I don't know about tomorrow night we're supposed to be a quick one because we everybody that's there has to go mm -hmm. back home and do ballot counting so we're not going to hang around and visit for a while okay. uh but uh yes we definitely need to talk we've got three of those there's two of us um three of them, two of us that will say, okay, does this kick or where do we believe it kicks into full select board approval? Right. It's not written, but uh, the interlocal agreement can be adjusted. And I guess that's you and Therese and David and Victoria are going to rewrite that or renegotiate or whatever. Yeah. And on that piece of it, Teresa and I had talked and we were going to reach out and see if we could start the communications with Royal 10 um, at some point next week. We wanted to get through uh, town meeting day. So I don't know if we'll actually meet next week or we'll have a plan for the following week. But that's that's our goal is to is to start the initial negotiations and then bring it back to the board. Um, we could probably back to the board by the 28th right Therese yeah and you and I need to meet so, this yeah. week or next week to hammer out you know our points that the our negotiating points so so I think that's kind of our our goal at this point for that <clears throat> so that's all I got for you now and like I said this tomorrow night is just a matter of uh we know what we owe Carl, and we know what it costs if he wants to do the repair drawings. So I, I, I think we just have to agree on that. And I think we're going to go ahead with having him do the repair drawings. Well, just send us good news only. Um. <laughs> well, if you don't hear from me, <laughs> I'm sorry, but. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> if it's not good news, don't show up to ballot count. <laughs> You'll All let right. them know I that, can, right? I can tell you I tell you, it's bad news oh, already. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate you spearheading this because otherwise you've gotten so much farther than, than it would have otherwise. So I appreciate all your efforts. I'd like to say it's been fun, but that would be a lot. <laughs> right. Um, so Chris, Chris, the only other thing after BRTS under any other business is um, this was our last meeting that we had discussed doing zoom i don't know what you want to do um what you all want to do in march if you were going back to in person or what so um i just don't want to forget to discuss that because i won't know how to warn your next meeting yeah i mean i kind of looking over the um, i was well I was look, for a couple of things i was looking over the state data as well mm -hmm. as cdc's uh new guidelines in regards to mask wearing and you know, public meetings and things like that. And um, it, it appears right now that Vermont is in the um, low risk category. I guess there's 72% um, of the territory in, in uh, the United States that they're classifying low risk. And then there's 28% that they classify high risk. And the, the new data out is, you know, obviously mask wearing um, and, and or, you know, mitigate in-person meetings in the high risk places, but in the low risk, they've gone as far to say that uh, masking is not mandatory. Um, and obviously, you know, um, meetings and things like that are, are something that we can get back to. So data wise, I guess if we're following that um, and Vermont falls into that category that, you know, I'd be fine with going back to in-person starting the 14th. It's kind of weird because the meetings are the exact same days in February as they are in March. So I know it threw me off too. It's the 14th, I guess, would be the next one. So yeah. uh, if you guys are all fine with that, I'm fine with that. Um, we can still continue to offer the hybrid option. Um, sure. You know, we seem to have worked the, it's not perfect, um, but I think we've worked the bugs out so that people can, um, join remotely and we can hear everybody pretty well we finally figured out the um speaker in the hall and so mm -hmm. I, mean, I think we've cobbed it together pretty well <laughs> so it looks like I, I had saw gene look like he had thumbs up uh and lindley dave paul you guys are good with that okay, okay. so we'll plan on back to in person at the town hall um for the 14th then Okay, and I'll let um, Orca know so that we can go back so they can assist with the hybrid um, and we'll go back to doing that. No, plus you'll probably have things in the being sworn back in for um, select board members and things like that as well, right? Yeah, I have Kelly reaching out to people. We probably we'll do some of the standard stuff on the 14th, newspaper yep. of record, blah, blah, blah. But um, reappointments will probably happen on the 28th. Some of the basic reappointments can happen on the 14th, but I do have her reaching out to everybody to see about okay. you know people being reappointed. We obviously have still have space on the planning commission. We have now we will a public trustee of public funds, a select board member, a select board will have to appoint um, to fill Carol's seat. Um, we'll have a space on, we'll have possibly two spaces on the revolving loan fund committee. So we'll have a list, which will get published of spaces that we're looking for, but we've been looking for volunteers for years. So and nothing's new. We just have some more positions open, unfortunately. So when do we do our select board reorganization type meeting stuff? The 14th, um, because Chris and Dave will have to go to the town clerk's office and um, Kelly will administer the oath. And then the 14th will be an organizational meeting. I'm sorry, who did I say? You're assuming we're getting elected. Oh, well, you're the only ones on the ballot. I'm feeling pretty good about your chances. But so I'm sorry. We'll have it on the, you know, usually we'll have the first part of the 14th meeting would be yeah. the, point of the chair and, and yeah. any, any other 
changes that may or may not happen. Exactly. And you have a certain, there's a list of annual appointments that or annual business that you have to take care of every year. So sure. we'll do that too. But um, yeah, so Lindley and Chris, Lindley and Dave <laughs> will get there. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry, we'll get um, well, if you get on the select board, you'll get sworn at too. So it'll <laughs> possibly in multiple in, ways. Um, sworn with. Yeah. So uh, you'll have the swearing in and do all that. But yeah, we'll restructure on the 14th. So. All righty. Did we have any other business come before the board? Oh, uh, one thing I just wanted to, so I, I sent out um, Teresa's self evaluation to all the board members. If you haven't received it yet, uh, let me know if for some reason you can get it. So the goal would be at the next meeting on the 14th that we would have an executive session just for the board members to go over Teresa's um, evaluation for the year. And then we'll follow up on the 28th meeting with uh, the in person evaluation with Teresa, if that works with everybody on the board. So and I'd like to wait and do the goal setting in April once we have the results of the survey, because some of the results of the survey I've seen right now, um, it may, you know, it may, it'll definitely swing a couple of projects that maybe we want to focus on. Um, sure. Yeah, I think that'll be helpful. Chris, if you could send that to me again, I would appreciate it. I, I will think I'll I've make received. sure. Um, I'll double check, make sure I had the right email. I thought I sent it to you and I, I'll send another one. Uh, for some reason you don't um, get a hold of me and I will. Uh, yeah, oh. cyber, the oh. cyber spooks have been playing funny with my email recently. So I've had a number of people in town who said they have that my mail bounced. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'll take, uh, a, I'll take a look on that for you. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Gene, if you don't get it, I can print you a hard copy when you guys come in to sign stuff tomorrow and Wednesday. So All if right. you don't get it, let me know. And, and I'll, um, I'm there, if I'm there, I will run you or I can put one in an envelope. If you don't get it, let me know. And I'll yeah. make you a hard copy. Okay. Just make sure if you're a BCA member to Come on down at seven o'clock tomorrow evening and get your count. Yep. So, yes, because Pam may hurt you if you don't yeah, show up. I know. I, <laughs> I asked her. I asked her if I could go to the uh, high school uh, basketball game tomorrow night. She said no. So, guess yeah. I'm, uh, not allowed. She, so. Yeah, she told me that if you didn't go, that she was going to toilet paper your house. <laughs> I told her we have to bring a steak for Brady. <laughs> so. At least I'll know who did it. <laughs> Uh, she's, you know, it's always stressful before you do it the night before an election. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So all hands on deck. It makes light quicker work. Okay. All right. Unless there's anything else, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. I can. Second. Ready. Well, have a good evening and. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's, it's only eight o'clock. You're done. <laughs> you want us yeah. to just make stuff up? I can't believe this. So like, well, we didn't book much on the agenda because we didn't know last year when we did this, I think we had maybe 12 people come for the pre-budget yeah. meeting. So you never know how much, you know, we have stuff, other stuff we can tackle, but um, we didn't want to get, we want to be able to answer every single person's question. So um, a good two, meeting lasts two hours or less. Yes. We, <laughs> we try not to get into these long and sometimes it's not us, it's public comment or something that ends up going awry. Yeah, we're all, we all like to share our dissertations when we pop on here, so. Yeah, yeah so sometimes it's hard, you know, you, I think I've got this tight schedule and then all of a sudden the wheels come off the bus. But well, I'm I don't want to kill you, but I just, I just, I'm pleasantly surprised. Yes. And my wife will be pleasantly surprised too. Yeah. So well, thank you. It's so all well, so nice to see you all, and thanks yeah. for your work. Yeah, thanks, Christy. Right. Good night. Day. Have a good evening, everybody. Good, evening. good night, everyone.